Hey everyone and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV where today we are taking care of our level 35 warrior quest from Curious Gorge here up at Hidden Falls in the... Well, you know what? We've seen the first warrior quest already. You know where this is. Hello there, Curious Gorge. Curious Gorge is struggling to decipher the ancient texts. Welcome back, my friend. I can see that you've not neglected your training. For my part, I fear that deciphering the ancient chronicles of my people is proving to be a much more demanding task than I had imagined. Mind you, it hasn't helped that I've been somewhat preoccupied of late. A comrade of mine from my days in the Company of Heroes asked me to do a favor, and it's taken me back and forth across the realm like some bloody fairy. I'm on a hunt for some mysterious feral beast that's been terrorizing small folk. People don't know where this monstrosity came from, but witnesses say its thirst for blood is unlike anything they've ever seen. Unfortunately, the time I have spent in pursuit of the beast is time I have not but spent studying the Chronicles, and I am sorry to say I've made little progress. However, while on the road, I was able to decipher one passage that may be of interest to us both. From what I can gather, the Chronicles tell of an ancient set of armor forged by my ancestors in the Flames of the Seven Hells, and inscribed with the same arcane incantations that adorned the soul of the warrior. It would seem that this mighty armor was passed down from hero to apprentice for centuries, until one man, driven by rage and vainglory, cast, uh, cast all five pieces from Abalathia's highest peak. Since that day, his, the armor has remained lost, and with it, the power that it harbors. As far as I can make out, the next passage in the Chronicles concerns the whereabouts of these missing artifacts, though I have only been able to make sense of the odd words thus far. Still, I must uh, confess to some excitement. Imagine what a warrior clad in such garb could achieve. Ah, if only my brother were here. We could decipher the text together and spread the teachings of our people to the entire realm. Alas, he is not. His whereabouts are as hidden to me as those of the ancient armor. I would have liked you to meet him, if only so that you could have looked upon a true warrior. Well, perhaps you shall. Uh, perhaps you still shall. Eorzea is not as large as most people perceive. Paths cross, fates intertwine. Such is the will of the spinner. It may be that my brother has chosen a similar path to mine, but I have rambled long enough. You are here to take the next step in your training, and so I shall oblige. In the southern reaches of Stanilin is the Sigoli Desert, a godsforsaken wasteland of naught but sand that stretches as far as the eye can see. It is here that the Leviathan of the Dunes lurks, a sandworm of gargantuan proportions. When facing this mammoth creature, you will soon realize that the feeble hacks and slashes of your puny axe are ill-suited to the task of felling such a foe. But do not let this dissuade you. Wake the slumbering beast within and summon forth a strength that transcends the limits of your physical form. Mind you, first you'll have to find the beast, and that might prove a tall order in itself. The Yu tribe that inhabits Forgotten Springs is wise to the movements of the denizens of the desert. Should you want for guidance, I wager they could set you in the right direction. Alright then, looks like we are heading back to Forgotten Springs, so I will meet you over there. All right, made it down to Forgotten Springs in the Sigoli Desert, so let's go ahead and go talk to people. Hello there, Ugoromuli. The Leviathan of the Dunes saw the fearsome bugger not a week ago, preying on the on a group of merchants south of Byrgot Strike. The smart ones dropped their wares, turned tail, and ran. The dumb ones, well, at least they can say they died rich. All right, south of Byrgot Strike, that's morbid. Next up, what do you know, Utawali? I have seen the beast. Stands three moms high, he does, and stirs up sandstorms with each writhe and wriggle. Showed up in my hunting field some years ago and has been swallowing up my would-be prey in that gaping maw of his ever since. I'm sorry, three moms? I don't believe you. I, we would be able to see that from... Probably from Ulda. No, easily from further away. Sandworms are particularly sensitive to vibrations in the earth, such as those made by running. If you're looking to summon one of the beasts, then I suggest you search for their tracks and run about making as much of a clamor as possible. I would also suggest you seek a cure for your madness. Alright, well, we at least have an idea. South of Byer got strike. It's very, very big and make a lot of noise to bring it out. Speaking of sandworms, now nah, we're not fighting these sandworms. We'll let, we'll let the U tribe deal with that. Alright, so, Byer got strike. Off to the far southeast, it looks like, over near where the... Over near a mining spot where we tend to get our, I believe it's mithril ore that we get down there? It's morning and my brain is in sleepy mode, so... Alright, well, let's get to hiking. 
And while we're in the area, I do have two other things I want to do. One, I want to make sure I've eaten food and also pulled out my chocobo companion. Since I do want to make sure... Oh dear. I do want to get Juniper some experience and I do want to make sure we are making use of our... Uh, making use of our food because I keep forgetting so frequently recently. The other thing I want to do is there is a twin order, uh, twin adder hunting log, order of the twin adder hunting log, that I want to take care of while we're down here. And we should be able to do that just up here at this encampment. Uh, let's take care of that real quick while I'm thinking about it, then we can just head straight south to get to the sandworm. So we are looking for... We've already fought one, but we need two more. It's a certain type of emulsia. We'll see the marker soon enough, I hope. Here we go, emulsia snipers. Alright, let's take you down. And make sure you're not going to be fighting Juniper. So, we got another sniper coming up. Well, perfect. I needed to hunt you anyway. Okay, there we go. That should finish off that entry on our twin adder hunting log. Perfect. Now, let's get to the sandworm. Ah, oh dear. Oh dear. This is not... Okay, there we go. We're safe. I thought we were stuck. That could have been awkward. I'm pretty sure I could have just used teleport to get back to, uh... Get back to Forgotten Springs, but... Well, I found where the merchants were attacked. Lovely. Pleasant. Alright, can we... Bring out the sandworm? Hi there! There you are. Alright, let's do this. I right, got a nice stun on you so you couldn't use your massive AoE. Uh oh, you're doing it again. And I did not get out in time. Oh well. I've been blinded. Okay, there we go. Sandworm dealt with. Now we can head back to Curious Gorge. Hello there, Curious Gorge. I returned from slaying a sandworm. Ah, uh, Satora, your crystal grows ever stronger. In felling the raging sandworm, the beast within you slowly but surely rouses to wakefulness. When next you do battle, methinks you'll find yourself capable of movements heretofore unfamiliar to you. When you have mastered your new talents, return to me. In the meanwhile, I shall continue my study of the ancient texts. Alright, we got the beast within. Increases beast gauge when landing maim or storm's path in a combo. And Inner Beast delivers an attack with a potency of 330 with a cost of 50 to our Beast Gauge. We have unlocked our new gauge for Warrior. Alright, let's get our hotbar set up and check out the Beast Gauge. The Beast Gauge displays the current strength of a warrior's wrath. This animalistic rage is required to execute several select actions such as Inner Beast and Steel Cyclone, acquired at level 45, and will grow weaker upon using them. Using certain actions will increase the Beast Gauge. Alright, it's an expansion of our tank hotbar. Ah, uh, let's see, where do I want to set Inner Beast? I'm going to set Inner Beast right there because I'm pretty sure I know what that eventually turns into, and I like that ability to be here. All right, so we have a gauge that we need to fill up as warrior. We'll just do that automatically as we fight enemies, and once it gets high enough, we can use uh, Inner Beast. All right then, let's go ahead and get started on our hunting log. And for our hunting log today, our first stop's going to take us up to Outer Linosia, it looks like, where we're gonna do the, le uh, the level 40 entry first, and that could be interesting. I hope we're gonna be fine. We'll probably be fine. Alright, I, I like to just use return and go to Wineport. It wasn't that far of a trek either way, but it was just a little bit easier to do this. Anyways, coming out of Wineport, we can head up north into Upper Linosia, the east side of Upper Linosia. 
Oh, yeah. And I believe I mentioned in a previous episode that, yeah, we've seen this from a distance. That giant... Yeah, it's an impact crater, if you can't tell. A giant fragment of Dalamu crashed down right here. Its trail of ether and all the spiraling ether around it crystallized on impact. It is beautiful and horrifying. Just look at all the solidified rock from the impact. Like, my goodness. You travel right up against that thing. And it is honestly scary. Thankfully, that was five, approaching six years ago in Satora's timeline. I've been keeping track of the endgame date. It's around the third, third approaching fourth month of the sixth year of the seventh Umbral Era. We're actually nearly, for Satora, we are nearly a year into her adventures. Let's see, can I get a better look at it from here? No, the mountains are in the way. Unfortunate. Alright, well, at least we can make our way up to Outer Linosia to take care of our hunting log entry. We're just gonna head all the way north from here. I really want to get a good look at it, but no, it's just... Oh, there it is! You can just barely see what I think is the top of it. Yeah, there's looks like there's actually a good distance between maps. Fair enough. Alright, well, let's go ahead and hike all the way up. We're almost to Outer Lenosia. So I'm gonna need a double- oh god, don't get stuck. Uh, double check coordinates. Where specifically are we going? Um, that shouldn't be too bad if that's where I think it is. We are going to have to dash through some high-level kobolds, which I don't want to deal with right now, but... Our target's going to be basically directly west of where we're at. Oh, so many kobolds. I, I, I will fight them eventually. I will deal with them eventually. They're on my twin adder hunting log. I definitely want to deal with them, just not... At this particular moment, I'd rather wait until we do the level 40 quests. Okay, the ba- uh, the... Grenades we are looking for should be right around here. Oh, we are actually going to have to dip into Cobalt territory, but at least the grenades we're looking for are actually part of a fate, so this... is actually perfect. We can just go ahead and participate in the fate, and that'll clear out our hunting log entry. Alright, well, once we take this down, I might as well finish the fate while I'm here. It'll be a good source of experience and extra, um, extra Twin Adder Grand Company seals, so. Let's take this one down. Uh-oh. Uh, I might not actually be high enough level for this fate. Let's go, let's go. Yep, we're definitely not high enough level. You know what, we will deal with this another time. Uh, I will meet you over in, where are we going? Ah, Kurthus. Alright, I'll meet you in Falgord Float in that case. Alright, passing through Falgord Float here in the North Stroud, we are heading on to Kurthus, an area we've been to a few times for hunting logs, for gathering, and for Dragoon. We have not yet been there in the main story, but we will be soon enough, I promise. Not, not for a little while, but we will get there. Alright then, let's go ahead and make our way all the way up this pass to the west, just heading straight out of, straight out west um, from Falgord Float, and we will come to the snowy northlands of Kurthus. Alright, so our hunting logs, we have several targets in the area. Highland Gubus, are you on my active hunting log, or are you... I see snowstorm gooboos on my hunting log, but not high land. Are you on the twin adder hunting log, I wonder? You do not appear to be. What hunting log are you? What? Okay, here we go. 
Ah, that's why. My checklist does, a, does not do a great job of displaying when, uh... Hunting log entries have multiple targets. They usually get, um... Beyond the first one, they usually get hidden. Since otherwise the line would just be too long, unfortunately. Alright, well then. We've got some gooboos to fight down here. And if we cross over the river, we should have some snow wolf pups as well. Oh dear, level 45s. Okay, nope, maybe not quite that far. Uh, where can we find those snow wolf pups? Actually, I'm seeing that apparently there's a good spawn of them up to the northeast. So maybe we could try up there. We'll hunt things we find as we go along. Alright, here we go. Here's a few. This should be plenty. And we've hit enough of our beast gauge in order to use our, our inner beast ability. Very nice. Inner beast? I should probably actually take a look at the specific details of what that does. Delivers an attack with a potency of 330. Very nice. Our best in our main combo is uh, 380, which also does auto heal us, but that's only the last in our main combo path. So definitely want to use Inner Beast when it is available. Okay, looks like we do, we do need to hunt four in total. And we got one more just up ahead. Alright, there we are. That's all of our Snow Wolf Pups. And that finishes off that entry. Beautiful. I saw a Gubu over here we can hunt. And then let's keep making our way to the east. Okay, anything else we can fight? Ah, here we go. One more Gubu. That should finish off the Gubus we need to fight. Or at least the Highland Gubus we need to fight. Alright, now where is our next target going to be? Looks like if we keep heading a little bit to the east and maybe up north, we should be able to find ornery caracals. We're also looking for red horn ogres, which will be again up to the north. There's a lot of enemies up just to the north, it seems like. All right, heading north from the observatorium. I'm not reading out the full name this time. God, that is a ridiculous name. Let's see, what can we find? We're also looking for downy avises, which are also to the north. Uh, we're looking for snowstorm goobus to the north. And that should be all of them once we found all of those. Ah, here we go. I believe these are going to be our caracools. And perfect. We got plenty around here. Okay, looks like we will need four in total, so let me go grab this one over here. And we've almost got Buzzin' Buddies 1 done. Nice. That should clear out the caracals. Awesome. And we got a level up. 
Okay, continuing north, we're gonna be heading through Camp Dragonhead here. And the coordinates I've got say... Further north from here. Yeah, if we keep heading north, we should eventually find those Redhorn Ogres and the Downy Avises. Meanwhile, the Snowstorm Gooboos will want to head west out of Camp Dragonhead. We have not been this far north before. We have definitely not been anywhere near this far north before. Up ahead, we have a giant building known as the Steel Vigil. Alright, where are those Downy Avises? I know they should be right around here somewhere. Here we are, Downy Avis. Don't mind if I just go ahead and do a little bit of murder on you. And looks like we're going to need to fight four of them, so let's see if I can find more. There you are. Can I find any more in the area? I'd like to start using my AoEs. Nope, okay, I'm not seeing anything. We'll have to take care of these two and then go on a more proper search. I really like that warrior uh, is able to heal themselves with Storm's Path. That's really nice. There is a running joke in the community. When you get to really higher level warrior to endgame warrior, you start to be just so good at self heals from Storm's Path and a few other abilit abilities that you pick up that people have basically dubbed the warrior as too angry to die. What with their inner beast theming and all. Literally, Warrior is so powerful that people have soloed end game content with just a Warrior. It is quite impressive how powerful Warrior can be. In fact, some recent patches, um, recent ish, like 6.3, 6.2, I believe, actually adjusted Warrior so that. Not only are they too angry to die, but at high levels, at endgame levels, they're too angry for their party to die. Like, literally, they start to have party heals from being so angry. It's very funny, actually. Alright, Downy Avises are down, and now we have Redhorn Ogres just ahead. Perfect, they're all hanging out together. Okay, there we are. One more to go. I assume if I keep heading north, I can find another one. Or maybe I want to head south instead. I would have thought I would have seen one by now. Okay, let's head south. This snow is not helping, to be honest. Yeah, we got a blizzard up here. Which, fair, it is the snowy north, but... It would be nice to be able to see a bit better. Alright, there we are. That should finish up entry number 37 completely. So now all that's left is going to be Snowstorm Gooboos, and those will be west of Camp Dragonhead. And we're gonna finish up with plenty of time left on our food. Not a bite wasted, and no need for second helpings. Perfect. Could not have asked for it to, uh, to work out better myself. And we are getting a little low on f A little. A little low on food. Thankfully, our next, uh, next crafting quest is going to be culinarian, so that is exciting. We're going to refill our food supplies. Alright, let's head west out of Camp Dragonhead. I believe the X is going to be right over here. And let's go find those Snowstorm Gooboos. 
Ah, perfect. They are just outside of the camp. Then let's do this. There's one. Need three more. There's number two. I see number three up there. Yeah, let's start making our trek over to number three. They'll be down well before we get there. Or not. Oh well, they're almost down. It's fine. Okay. After this, we need just one more. I don't see any over here. Might need to head a little bit further west. Oh, hello. We got another Gubu right there. Juniper, you are on top of things. You ran right over. To oh, wait, hang on. This is the one we were fighting earlier. Oh, they're too far apart. That's the issue. Okay. My hubris got the best of me. My hubris got the best of me. That was the problem. Fine. We'll take you down again, and then we'll go look for the last one. All right, one to go. And perfect timing, you just respond, it looks like. How is Juniper doing? That bosom buddies, that's gonna be what gets us to the next rank. And I'm worried, I want that rank to take a while since uh, Fafnarian onions are quite expensive. I might actually deliberately space it out and have Juniper just be capped for a while. All right, Gooboos are down, and that should clear out our hunting log. There should be nothing else. Yep, nothing else at rank four. All righty then, with that, next time on Final Fantasy XIV, we're heading back to Wineport in order to work with Shimani Lumani in hopes that we can finally get some of that wine for the feast we're putting together, for the banquet we are putting together. And then maybe, maybe we can finally face Titan? I would like to face Titan. I would very much like to stop it from causing problems. I'll see everyone next time for that.